dear student i am dr harold thomas professor in applied geology dr hari singh gaur vishwavidyalay sagar today in this course i will deliver my lecture on sedimentary structures today i will proceed under the following heads introduction classification inorganic sedimentary structure primary physical structures secondary chemical structures organic biogenic structure application and finally conclusion hope it will be useful for you try to be regular in course rocks form from material derived from pre-existing rocks by processes of denudation together with material of organic origin are sedimentary rock natural agencies like blowing wind running water percolating ground water glaciers in motion etc are in ceaseless operation causing continuous wear and tear of the rock exposed to their ferry the products of such decay are subjected under favorable condition to sedimentation and subsequent compact the resulting rock masses thus form under ordinary pressure temperature conditions are known as the sedimentary rocks or secondary rocks some of the most common rocks of this type are sandstone limestone laterite coal etc the sedimentary rocks are of widespread occurrence upon the surface of the globe the product of weathering may or may not remain at the spot where they were first formed the insoluble residue materials sometimes manage to evade the transporting agency and hence accumulate in situ at least for a certain length of time the soluble substances are readily removed in solution and the more durable constituents like quartz travel in suspension with the surface runoff till condition favorable for their sedimentations are met with the material thus transported either in solution or in suspension are capable of traveling variable distance ultimately to reach the sea whenever condition are favorable deposition may take place due to settling down of the suspended particles or precipitation of the soluble constituents the sediments thus formed continue to accumulate in suitable basin of the sedimentation and then accumulation is sufficient the loose particles are gradually subjected to compaction and finally conversion into sedimentary rocks it is estimated that every year about 50 tons of dissolved matters and 300 tons of solid matters for every square miles of the earth surface are carried to the sea sedimentary rocks are deposited in layers one over another the first form are at the bottom and the latter at the top sedimentology is the science that deal with the description classification and origin of sedimentary rocks and it is the study of sediments and sedimentation the science of sedimentology is a relative new and young discipline system and the basic principle of sedimentology have been developed and refined by geologists for over a century sedimentary structure is phenomenon of the macroscopic scale as we can observe them at outcrop or in hand specimens sedimentary rocks commonly so layering and other structures that form as sediment is transported 
the most important sedimentary structures are stratification, cross bedding, graded bedding, ripple marks and mud cracks. Primary sedimentary structures provide key information about the condition under which the sediments accumulated. Stratification, one of the most various characteristic of the sedimentary rocks is that they occur in distinct layers expressed by changes in color, texture and the way the different rocks unit weather and eroded. These layers are termed strata or simply beds. Stratification occur on many scale and reflects the changes that occur during the formation of a sedimentary rocks large scale stratification is expressed by major changes in rock types formation. For example, cliff of the limestone or sandstone can alternate with slopes of weaker cell. The origin of stratification is quite simple, different layer form because of some change that occurs during the process of deposition. But there are many types of changes that occur and operate on many different scale. So, the construction of a detailed history of sedimentary rock present a real challenge to the geologist, changes in weather, changes in the seasons and changes in climate all can produce stratification in a sedimentary basin. Tectonic changes such as uplift and subsidence of the continental platform, mountain building and volcanism all produce changes in material transported to the sea and all can produce different layer of sedimentary rocks. Primary sedimentary structure are those structure which are formed during or shortly after the deposition. Bedding geometry arrangement of sedimentary rock in beds or layer of various thickness and characters. A bedding is external structure, lamination, beds, the layer which separates the upper and lower part of the sediment is known as bed. Beds less than 1 centi centimeter is called as lamely. They are characterized by the grain sedimentary stratum. The most nearly primary structure of the sedimentary rock is the bedding or stratification. If the thickness is greater than 1 centimeter, then it is termed as stratum. Wave wedding, wedding characterized by undulatory boundaries surface. There is less granular regular striking of beds. Second, bedding in internal structures. Cross bedding can be defined as a single layer or a single sedimentation unit consisting of interlamely inclined to the principal surface of the sedimentation surface. Sedimentary rocks are normally deposited as horizontal layers even when folded or tilted by faulting and originally horizontal layers in various upon closer examination. However, you may be see very fine layers usually 1 to several millimeter thick that are at an angle to the main bedding. These tilted layers contained within larger layers are termed cross bedding. See figure on the screen it sketches above the sewing formation of cross bedding and the photographs of the same based on the character of the bounding surface 
two type of cross bedding have been recognized one surface planar cross bedding its surface formed more more or less planar second surface tough cross bedding when the bedding surface are curved graded bedding most sedimentary layers so a basically consistent grain size throughout their thickness or so essentially random variation in grain size sedimentary units marked by a gradation in grain size from coarse to fine upwards from the base to the top of the units however some beds have their largest particles at the base gradually move towards the smallest one at the top such beds are said to be normal graded normally rare others so the opposite pattern is small at the base coarse at the top and are said to be reversely graded graded beds form when a steep pile of sediments on the sea floor or lake floor suddenly slumps into a kiln or off a steep edge as the sediments fall water mixes in with it creating segliery of sediments and water that flow quickly down a sloping bottom when the bottom level out the flow begins to slow the coarsest sediment is deposited first and progressively finer and finer sediments is deposited until finally the area sees only normal sedimentation again such mixed sediments water flow are termed turbidity currents because the flow makes the water cloudy turbid see figure on the screen turbidity current and formation of graded bedding ripple marks mud cracks and other surface impression massive beddings beds are rarely without any terminal structure those which are apparently structures structure less have been termed as massive lamination many beds so an internal lamination structure of some sort in many the lamination is parallel to the bounding surface it can be referred as parallel lamination bedding planes markings when bed separates readily along bedding planes the surface produced commonly display various markings and structures sole marks these are markings found in the lower side if the beds sole marks they are mainly due to the mercy of current action they are produced by cutting or short scoring action of a current of water flow over the bottom tool marks tool marks are type of sole marking formed by groups left in the beds by things like sticks being dragged along by a current these differs from score marks in the being produced by subject carried by the flow interaction with the bed rather than flow itself surface mark markings present on the surface of beds mud cracks due to due to the loss of water by drying on the expose exposure some irregular polygonal fractures are present on the surface of beds mud cracks are also commonly preserved in sedimentary rocks and so that the sedimentary environment was occasionally exposed to the air during deposition mud cracks in rocks suggest that the original sediments was deposited in shallow lakes on tidal flats or on exposed extreme banks rain prints are even preserved in some mud rock mud cracks are also commonly preserved 
in sedimentary rock and so that the sedimentary environment was occasionally exposed to the air during deposition. Mud cracks in rocks suggest that the original sediment was deposited in shallow lakes on tidal flat or an exposed extreme banks. Rain prints are even preserved in some mud rocks. Ripple marks. Ripple marks are commonly seen in modern stream bends in tidal flats and along the shore of the lakes and the sea. Many are preserved in rocks and provided information concerning the environment of deposition such as depth of water. Ripple produces a small scale cross bedding or migration when a current flowing over a bed of sand reaches a certain velocity, sand particles begin to move and ripping appear on the surface of the sand. Ripple bedding can be asymmetrically and symmetrically one of a series of small marine lake or river features consisting of repeating wave like form with symmetric slopes, sharp peaks and rounded tufts. Ripple marks are formed in sandy bottoms by oscillation waves in which only the wave form advances rapidly. The actual water particles motion consisting of almost closed vertical orbits. The presence of the bottom restricts the lowermost orbits into the nearly flat ellipse and the bottom water moves back and forth rhythmically. If the maximum horizontal velocity of this motion is capable of moving the grains composing the beds, ripple marks develop rain prints, a small shallow depression formed by the impact of the raindrop in a fine sand mud or clay and sometimes preserved on the bedding planes of the sedimentary rocks. Pits and prints, rain, hills and spray impression are a small circular to ellipsoidal pits formed in wet mud. These marks indicate environmental depression. Deformational structures. In addition to sedimentary structure that are normally associated with bedding planes, there are other such structures that result from deformation during or shortly after sedimentation, but before in duration of sediments into the rock. These are non-tectonic feature that is they are not bends and folds brought about by metamorphism or other such causes. Type of deformed structures, convolutes, beddings, these form when complex folding and crampling of beds or lamination occur. This type of deformation is found in fine or silty band, uh, sands and is usually confined to one rock layers. Convolutes lamination are found in flood plains, delta points, bar and intertidal flat deposit. They are generally range in size from 3 to 25 centimeter, but there have been large formation recorded as several meters thick. Flame structure Flame structure consisting of mud and are wave or flame shaped. These flames usually extend into an overlying sediments layer. This deformation is caused from sediments being deposited onto the mud which is less dense. This and pillar structure. This structure are thin disc shaped formation that normally occur in siltstone and sandstone. The size of 
such discs often range from 1 cm to 50 cm in size and form as a result of dewatering pillar structure often appear along with disc structures and also form by dewatering. They have a vertical orientation which cuts across laminated or massive sands. Ball and pillow structure, a structure found in sandstone and some limestone characterized by hemispherical or kidney shaped masses resembling balls and pillows. Second is structure, the structures formed by chemical processes such as oxidation, reduction, precipitation and evaporation etc. It is divided into two parts on the basis of formation. Formed by the action of solution, stalolites, these are irregular surface of one side fit into sockets of like dimension on the other. In cross section, stalolites surface resembles a suture. Wakes, they are a small to medium size cavities inside rocks that may be formed through a variety of process, which may also result when minerals, crystal or fossils inside a rock matrix are later removed through erosion or dissolution process. Olicast, these structure are displayed by a rock having olitic structure. Olites are a small spherical accretionary bodies generally ranging from 0.25 millimeter to 2 millimeter in diameter formed by segregation of mineral water matter nodules. A nodules is generally spherical or irregularly rounded in shape. These are typically solid replacement bodies of chert or iron oxide formed during diagenesis of sedimentary rocks or in other words a, a small nodules is a small irregularly rounded knots concretion it consists of round or irregular masses of more resistant rock formed as a result of precipitating around a core material usually of fossil or grain of different composition. Geodes, geodes are essentially rock cavities or wakes with internal crystal formation or concentric bendings. The exterior of the most common geodes is generally limestone or related carbonate rocks, while the interior contains quartz crystal and or by chalcedony deposits. Septeria, those are large size ranging from 10 to 100 centimeter, distinctly oblate nodules characterized by the series of radiating cracks that widen towards the center and dies out near the margin that is crossed by a series of cracks concentrate with the margin. These are formed as a result of direct or indirect effect of organic activities. It means a laminated structure composed of particulate sand, silt and clay sized sediments which has been formed by the trapping and binding of detritus sedimentary particles by a algal mat. Fossils and trace fossils, another key feature of many sedimentary rocks is fossil, fossils of the once living organism. Fossil often reveals much about the past environment, uh, giving us hints about the whether a deposit is marine or continental. What the water depth was with the sediment was deposited 
and about the temperature and salinity of the water. Beyond that, however, fossil in sedimentary rocks reveal the history of the evolution of life, although the record is far from complete everything we know about the past life comes from reconstruction based on ancient fossil tracks trails and boring of animals are typically associated with ripple marks and mud cracks and can provide additional important clue about the environment in which the sediment accumulated as can be seen primary sedimentary structure and fossils are the clue or by tools used by geologists to interpret the condition and environment at the site where the sediment is deposited. Petrification, it is the replacement of inorganic matter by organic matter. It is a cell to cell replacement where the original structure of the organic matter is preserved. For example, petrified wood application, they reflect upon the nature of the environment during sedimentation. The style and orientation of ripple marks may also be used as an indicator of which direction the water was flowing at the time of sedimentation. Biological structure are useful in places to determine a stratigraphic order in a vertical overturned sequence. Trace fossil can be mapped and used to define major phases belts. The study of sedimentary rock is important to understand the paleo and present sedimentary environment. Furthermore, studies, please read the textbook references and link given in the text. Thank you very much.